Maratha Empire Military Contributions Some historians have credited the Maratha Navy for laying the foundation of the Indian Navy and bringing significant changes in naval warfare. A series of sea forts and battleships were built in the 17th century during the reign of Shivaji. It has been noted that vessels built in the dockyards of Konkan were mostly indigenous, constructed without foreign aid. Further, in the 18th century, during the reign of Admiral Kanoji Angre, a host of dockyard facilities were built along the entire western coastline of present-day Maharashtra. The Marathas fortified the entire coastline with sea fortresses with navigational facilities. Nearly all the hill forts, which dot the landscape of present-day western Maharashtra were built by the Marathas. The renovation of Jinji Fortress in Tamil Nadu has been particularly applauded. Development of Towns and Civic Communities During the 18th century, the Peshwas of Pune brought significant changes to the town of Pune, building dams, bridges, and an underground water supply system. During the 18th century, misrule and pursuance of oppressive policies by the Marathas have been noted in the town of Ahmedabad. Patronizing religion. Queen Ahilya Bai Holkar has been noted as a just ruler and an avid patron of religion. She has been credited for building, preparing and numerous temples in the town of Maheshwar in Madhya Pradesh and across North India. Its anloom industry is also said to have flourished under the rule of the Holkars. The Bhosles of Nagpur ruled the present-day state of Odisha in the latter half of the 18th century where the Maratha rulers patronized religion and religious institutions which made Odisha a center of attraction. Several ghats in Varanasi were repaired and reconstructed during the Maratha rule of the 18th century. Fine Arts and Palaces The Maratha rulers of Tanjore were patrons of fine arts and their reign has been considered as the golden period of Tanjore history. Art and culture reached new heights during their rule. They also considered themselves as representatives of Cholas referring themselves as Chola Simhasanathipathi. They made significant contributions towards Sanskrit and Marathi literature, Bharatanatyam, and Carnatic music. Several majestic palaces were built by Maratha principalities which include the Shanivar Vada. Military The Maratha army under Shivaji was a national army consisting of personnel drawn mainly from Maharashtra. It was a homogeneous body commanded by a regular cadre of officers who had to obey one supreme commander. With the rise of Peshwas this national army had to make room for a feudal force provided by different Maratha Sardars. This new Maratha army was not homogeneous, but employed soldiers of different backgrounds, both locals and foreign mercenaries, including large numbers of Arabs, Sikhs, Rajputs, Sindhis, Rohilas, Abyssinians, Pathans, Topiwalas and Europeans. The army of Nana Fadnavis, for example, included 5,000 Arabs. Afghan Accounts The Maratha army, especially its infantry, was praised by almost all the enemies of the Maratha Empire, ranging from the Duke of Wellington to Ahmad Shah Abdali. After the third battle of Panipat, Abdali was relieved as the Maratha army in the initial stages were almost in the position of destroying the Afghan armies and their Indian allies, the Nawab of Aud and Rohilas. The Grand Vizier of the Durrani Empire, Sardar Shah Wali Khan was shocked when Maratha Commander-in-Chief Sadashiv Bhau launched a fierce assault on the center of Afghan army, over 3,000 Durrani soldiers were killed alongside Haji Ate Khan, one of the chief commander of Afghan army and nephew of Vizier Shah Wali Khan. Such was the fierce assault of the Maratha infantry in hand-to-hand -hand combat that Afghan armies started to flee and the vizier in desperation and rage shouted, Comrades whither do you fly, our country is far off. Post-battle, Ahmad Shah Abdali in a letter to one Indian ruler claimed that Afghans were able to defeat the Marathas only because of the blessings of Almighty and any other army would have been destroyed by the Maratha army on that particular day even though the Maratha army was numerically inferior to the Afghan army and its Indian allies. Though Abdali won the battle, he also had heavy casualties on his side. So, he sought immediate peace with the Marathas. Abdali wrote in his letter to Peshwa on 10 February 1761. There is no reason to have animosity amongst us. Your son Vishwasrav and your brother Sadashiv died in battle, it was unfortunate. Bhau started the battle, so I had to fight back unwillingly. Yet I feel sorry for his death. Please continue your guardianship of Delhi as before, to that I have no opposition. Only let Punjab until Sutlaj remain with us. Reinstate Shah Alam on Delhi's throne as you did before and let there be peace and friendship between us, this is my ardent desire. Grant me that desire. European Accounts Similarly, the Duke of Wellington, after defeating the Marathas, noted that the Marathas, though poorly led by their generals, had regular infantry and artillery that matched the level of that of the Europeans and warned other British officers from underestimating the Marathas on the battlefield. 
He cautioned one British general that you must never allow Maratha infantry to attack head on or in close hand to hand combat as in that your army will cover itself with utter disgrace. Even when Arthur Wellesley, 1st Duke of Wellington, became the Prime Minister of Britain, he held the Maratha infantry in utmost respect, claiming it to be one of the best in the world. However, at the same time he noted the poor leadership of Maratha generals, who were often responsible for their defeats. Charles Metcalfe, one of the ablest of the British officials in India and later acting Governor-General, wrote in 1806. India contains no more than two great powers, British and Maharata, and every other state acknowledges the influence of one or the other. Every inch that we recede will be occupied by them. Norman Gash says that the Maratha infantry was equal to that of British infantry. After the Third Anglo-Maratha War in 1818, Britain listed the Marathas as one of the martial races to serve in the British Indian Army. The 19th century diplomat Sir Justin Shield commented about the British East India Company copying the French Indian Army in raising an army of Indians. It is to the military genius of the French that we are indebted for the formation of the Indian Army. Our warlike neighbours were the first to introduce into India the system of drilling native troops and converting them into a regularly disciplined force. Their example was copied by us, and the result is what we now behold. The French carried to Persia the same military and administrative faculties, and established the origin of the present Persian regular army, as it is styled. When Napoleon the Great resolved to take Iran under his auspices, he dispatched several officers of superior intelligence to that country with the mission of General Gardan in 1808. Those gentlemen commenced their operations in the provinces of Azerbaijan and Kamanshah, and it is said with considerable success. Sir Justin Shiel, Notable Generals and Administrators Ramchandra Pant Amatya Bhavdekar Ramchandra Pant Amatya Bhavdekar was a court administrator who rose from the ranks of a local Kulkarni to the ranks of Ishta Pradhan under guidance and support of Shivaji. He was one of the prominent Peshwas from the time of Shivaji, prior to the rise of the later Peshwas who controlled the empire after Shahu. When Rajaram fled to Jinji in 1689 leaving the Maratha empire, he gave a Hukumat Panha to Pant before leaving. Ramchandra Pant managed the entire state under many challenges like influx of Mughals, betrayal from Vatandars and social challenges like scarcity of food. With the help of the Pant Pratinidhi, he kept the economic condition of the Maratha Empire in an appropriate state. He received military help from the Maratha commanders, Santaji Ghorpade and Dhanaji Jadhav. On many occasions he himself participated in battles against the Mughals. In 1698, he stepped down from the post of Hukumat Panha when Rajaram offered this post to his wife, Tarabai. Tarabai gave an important position to Pant among senior administrators of the Maratha state. He wrote Adnipatra in which he has explained different techniques of war, maintenance of forts and administration etc. But owing to his loyalty to Tarabai against Shahu, he was sidelined after the arrival of Shahu in 1707. Nana Fadnavas Nana Fadnavis was an influential minister and statesman of the Maratha Empire during the Peshwa administration. After the assassination of Peshwa Narayan Rav in 1773, Nana Fadnavis managed the affairs of the state with the help of a 12-member regency council known as the Barbhai Council and he remained the chief strategist of the Maratha state till his death in 1800 AD. Nana Fadnavis played a pivotal role in holding the Maratha confederacy together in the midst of internal dissension and the growing power of the British. Nana's administrative, diplomatic and financial skills brought prosperity to the Maratha Empire and his management of external affairs kept the Maratha Empire away from the thrust of the British East India Company. Rulers, Administrators and Generals Royal Houses Shivaji Sambhaji Rajaram Chhatrapati Satara Shahu I Ramaraja II Shahu II Pratap Singh signed a treaty with the East India Company ceding part of the sovereignty of his kingdom to the company. Kolhapur Tarabai in the name of her son Shivaji II Shivaji II Sambhaji II came to power by deposing his half-brother Shivaji II Shivaji III Peshwas Morupant Trimbek Pingle Nilakant Moreshwar Pingal Ramchandra Pantamatya Bahiraji Pingal Parshuram Trimbak Kulkarni Peshwas from the Bhat family. From Balaji Vishwanath onwards, the actual power gradually shifted to the Bhat family of Peshwas based in Pune. Balaji Vishwanath. Bajirao. Balaji Bajirao. Madhavrav Peshwa. Narayan Rav Bajirao. Raghunatra. Savai Madhava Rao II Narayan. Baji Rao II. Houses of Maratha Confederacy. Holkars of Indore. Sindhyas of Gwalior. Gayakwars of Baroda. 
Bhonsales of Nagpur, Pours of Devas and Dhar, Patwardhans, Bhoites of Jalgaon, Eradgaon, Nevalkars of Jansi, Vinchurkars, Maps showing the Maratha Empire at different stages of history. Thanjavur Maratha Kingdom, Tamil Nadu. The Thanjavur Marathas were the rulers of Thanjavur Principality of Tamil Nadu between the 17th and 19th centuries. Their native language was Thanjavur Marathi. Vinkoji, Shahaji's son and Shivaji's half-brother, was the founder of the dynasty. List of rulers of Thanjavur Maratha dynasty. Vinkoji. Shahuji the first of Thanjavur. Sirfoji the first. Tukji. Pratap Singh of Thanjavur, Tuljaji, Sirfoji II, Shivaji II of Thanjavur. Citations